Hello friends, welcome back. Uh, thanks for all the interaction, comments, feedback, that sort of thing about my last video, which is right there, which is about the upcoming update to Luminar Neo, which will be version 1.19.0. There's a lot of really cool new stuff in it that I'm super excited about. And in this video, I'm gonna be walking through some of those tools, how I'm using them, and how I'm using them specifically to control the light, control the color, edit a photo, that sort of thing. Let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got a photo that I started with that looked like that. That's the raw file. I have cropped it and straightened it. And as you can see over here, I did a little bit with Develop Raw, Super Contrast, and then I used Structure AI with a Mask AI for sky and water to make it smooth. And then I copied and inverted that mask for Structure AI again to add a little bit of uh, positive structure to like the buildings and, and the uh, trees and that sort of thing. So again, before and after. And what I want to do is jump into the tools and start showing off this new stuff that's coming in a little bit more depth and walking through how I'm using them to edit my photos. Now the first tool for me here is going to be color harmony and what I want to do is really bring up some of these colors and I want to show how I'm using luminosity mask to help me do that. So I'm going to go ahead and bump these up and it doesn't matter if you make the adjustments and then create a mask or if you create the mask and then add the adjustments later. It doesn't matter. The result is really the same uh, and I do both uh, depending on how I'm feeling, I guess. It just depends. In this case, I'm doing all the adjustments first and then I'll create the mask. So I'm going to go ahead and go into shadows here and get a little bit more blue. That's going to be about a 10 or 11. So let's call it that. I'm going to go into midtones and I'm going to get a little bit of red, just a tiny bit, like a two, three, something like that. And then I'm going to go into highlights and get a little magenta. That's going to be uh, like a negative seven. So if you look at the before and after, there it is before and there it is after quite a bit of color pop. And this is where my favorite, most favorite, super exciting new tool comes in. And that is in masking. And that is luminosity masking. It's a mask based on light values. So you can really control where and how your edits are applied based on the tonal values in the image. So you can um, isolate edits to just the shadows or just the highlights or just the midtones. You can fade it. It's so fantastic. I just absolutely love it. I've been using it for years in other products and I'm so happy that it is in Luminar, uh, or going to be in Luminar Neo here really soon. Now, keep in mind, I'm still working with a beta copy, so there could be some minor adjustments or differences uh, once this product is finally ready to release, which is going to be on April 25th, as I understand it. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, you know, I'm showing you kind of what's coming, so consider this another preview, if you will. My mask looks like that, which is, as you can see, it's more to the right, so it's mostly applying to the brighter parts and the midtones. The bright parts or highlights is going to be the right hand side where it's wider. The midtones here, the gray, and the shadows are this left side where it's more in black. And as you can see, the trees don't really have a mask over them. The mask is represented by that red or pink overlay. Not really applying to the trees. That's because they're over here in shadow. So it's really just kind of touching them lightly and it's hitting the other things a little bit more uh, heavily. And that for me is the beauty of luminosity mask because now my colors look like that, which to me looks a bit more gentle and subtle than it was when it was applied across the entire photo. It's just going into more specific parts of the image. So before uh, color harmony and after, thanks to a luminosity mask, I think it looks kind of fantastic to be honest. Now there's a couple of new tools here in addition to luminosity masking that I wanna use. The first one is Twilight Enhancer. And I like this mauve preset. I'm gonna go at about a 25 and just apply that across the entire photo. So if you look at the before and the after, I think that looks really nice. It adds that nice kind of, um, well, it's kind of a twilighty kind of, I don't know, blue hour. It's got a little magenta feel to it, which I like. And so I think it works on photos like this. Again, before and after, I do find myself sometimes masking it in. Uh, I'm not gonna do that in this video or for this photo, but I do want to go into water enhancer and I'm going to add a little bit there. I'm only going to do about a 15 or so on the amount. I'm going to do 30 on blue and I'm going to pull back a little bit of that original color. So maybe a 35, which was already kind of blue, but I like the brightness uh, section here because I can just bring that up and I'm going to go 75 or 76 because the uh, twilight enhancer makes it a little bit darker and there are settings in twilight enhancer to help adjust that. I didn't do it here, but I wanted to bring the water uh, exposure value of the water up, which is great to do with water enhancer uh, AI. So if you look at the before and the after, I think my water's looking a little bit better. You will note that there's no masking tools available in water enhancer because it's automatically finding the water and it's built to just mask in the water. So there's no masking there. 
but you don't need it because it's uh, essentially there. Now, you can come in and refine that, and I did that in my preview video where I painted in a couple of areas where it's slightly missed. Generally, it does a really good job of finding things, but if you need to, you can adjust the mask. But again, before and after with Water Enhancer, I think we're in pretty good shape, and what I want to do now is go into one of my favorite tools, which I love, but you got to be really careful with, and that is Accent AI over here in the Enhance AI category. Now, I'm going to do something like in the mid-50s, and automatically it gives a big boost to the photo because Accent AI does a lot of stuff to a photo, and I love that, and I want to be careful with it. Well, a great way to be careful with things, of course, is with a luminosity mask, my old friend. So I'm going to come in here, and what I want to do is I'm going to create a fairly narrow band of the tonal values that I want to be um, adjusted with Accent AI. So instead of hitting the entire photo, because it brightens all kinds of stuff, I don't really want the shadows to get too impacted, so I'm going to pull those up, kind of get rid of that in the shadows. Then I'm also going to pull it from the highlights. I don't want to overdo it there. So I start making a pretty narrow band, but I love these triangles because that gives you the ability to fade that. And so I get this nice, generous fade. It's like a gradient, and that allows me to really control where this is going in the image and be really subtle and kind of, uh, you know, uh, gentle about it, perhaps. So there's an example of using a luminosity mask. I'm targeting really the midtones with a generous fade, so it's fading from the midtones on this side into the shadows, and because of this uh, section that I created over here by dragging this triangle on the right, it's fading from the midtones kind of into the highlights. And so you can see that in the photo. It fades into a little bit of the shadow, it fades into a little bit of the highlights, and now my Accent AI does not look as over the top. If you look at the before and the after, it's just a nice, subtle little punch to the photo, which I think looks kind of fantastic, to be honest. So I'm going to do a few more things to this photo just to kind of wrap it up. I want to get a little bit of glow, and what I'm going to get is Orton effect, which I don't use in a lot of videos. And I'm going to go to, let's say, 40 or 41. So let's say 40 looks good but I don't really want it in the sky. I really dislike it in the water. And so this is another good way to use a mask is a linear gradient. And you can tilt it and fade it. This is your gradient zone that allows you to fade that effect. And all I've done is created a mask. All this red down here is getting 100% of the effect and then it fades in this area that I've created, right? You can make it larger or smaller, but I want it to kind of fade to the edge of the water. So something about like that I think looks pretty good. And that glow now is just going to be applied to those areas that are contained in the mask with a fade, kind of a gentle fade, onto the uh, kind of the concrete walkway and, and barrier at the edge. This is in front of Bellagio in Las Vegas. Bellagio is essentially to the right, and I'm looking at, at of course, Paris, and uh, I think that's Cosmopolitan. But if you look at the before and the after, that glow gives a nice little pop to the water. It also brightens it, which I think complemented what I did with Water Enhancer. Now, the other thing that's cool and that I'm using a lot in this new update that's coming is the object select masking because I'm looking at this photo and I want to go into object select and what I want to do is grab this building and you see it finds it pretty quickly, pretty easily, and really pretty accurately. You do need to be careful around some edges. It's not exactly perfect every single time, but it's a really powerful tool that allows me to just grab that building and give it a slight bump in exposure. I just want to brighten it a little bit. 0.29 looks fine. But in the past, I would have to go in with a brush and paint in and kind of brush that in. And it gets a little tedious in fairness. And all I want to do is grab that building, brighten it slightly. Object Select Mask does a great job. So there it is before. And there it is now slightly brighter and a little bit more visible, which I think looks good. And the only other thing I want to do is maybe brighten a little bit of the shadows. This is another way I use Luminosity Mask. Go into Masking and Luminosity. And again, it identifies them uh, different tonal values or tonal areas in the photo. And what I want to do is I don't want to do anything with highlights. So I'm just going to kind of get away from those guys and maybe fade this a little bit. And what I want to do, I like to do kind of a generous fade. And then just also keep in mind that you can drag this uh, section that you've selected. Once you've collapsed it, you can drag it left or right. It maintains the fade. So I can do a fade on either side and it'll maintain that as I drag this, and that kind of helps you further refine some of your areas. And so I'm going to go back into some of these uh, little bit darker tones, maybe pull in that fade a little bit. So maybe something about like that. You can see my mask gets a little uh, specific, I guess, which is the point, right? You're able to be specific. 
but I just isolated some of those areas. And what I want to do is just give them a little bit of brightening. So you can see what I'm doing there. And I think that gives a little bit more pop to the photo. So if you look at the before and the after, the before and the after, just kind of brighten those areas up a little bit. And that luminosity mask and being able to compress those tonal areas and then do the fade, it really lets you isolate tones pretty quickly and powerfully. And frankly, for doing an up uh, a uh, brightening like I just did there before and after, it's way quicker and frankly way more accurate than me just coming in with a brush and hitting a few areas. So what I'm doing is essentially dodging and burning with a luminosity mask. So before and after, and that's really my whole edit. So if you look at the all the, the entire before, there's the unedited image, raw file, and after, brought up the colors, brought up the light, made lots of different adjustments using new tools like object select, luminosity masking, of course, my favorite, the twilight enhancer, and of course the water enhancer, but it allows you easily, frankly, and quickly to bring a photo to life and make it look the way you want it to look without having to do a lot of complicated kind of manual things. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy, I think you're going to be excited about this update, my friends. I'm excited, and I'm having a lot of fun with it. I know you will as well. Leave your uh, comments down below. I appreciate you guys following along. I'll be back soon with more detailed videos about these new features. I'll see you then, my friends. You guys take care, and until next time, adios.